Sage Wanderer here and welcome to the sheep pen bah, where no goats are allowed. So today we're going to talk about crossing over to the dark side. Don't, don't, don't. What does working for the devil pay? <laughs> I think one of the things that some of you like about me is that I got no problem looking the devil right in his face and laughing. And before I get further into this, I do want to make uh, a point that a lot of evangelicals and some Pentecostals and other Christians, a lot of fringe Christians, uh, they believe in a boogeyman. They believe in a devil that is one entity. They don't believe in demons. They don't believe this entity has a army of demons working for him. And in that they are absolutely wrong. Uh, they are wrong uh, theologically. They are wrong doctrinally. They're, they're wrong biblically. The Bible tells us in no uncertain terms that there is an army of demons working in concert together. And there isn't just one devil. And the problem with this boogeyman imaginary devil is that they give him godlike qualities. The devil does not have godlike qualities. If there is a primary demon, a Satan, um, I don't use the L word. Uh, we've talked about that in previous times. I, that's a, another video to do. But yeah, Satan, the devil, the great adversary. Uh, I don't believe that there's just one. And I don't believe that he has any special powers beyond what we allow him through our own agreements. So when you agree with the devil or demons, when you agree with the dark side, then you give them permission to operate in your life. There are some uh, theologians who believe that demons don't have any supernatural power at all. That they appear to have supernatural power by using their power. The only supernatural power demons have is telepathy and deception, right? This is what some people believe. I, I believe they have uh, access to spiritual power just to a lesser degree than we do because we have rights here. So I'm not one of those that believe they don't have power, but some do. Some the, uh, deep theologians who study demonology believe that demons don't even have any power at all. And when it seems like they do, when it seems like they're operating in a supernatural way, really all is happening is that they are utilizing your power and your authority, your spirit power as a rightful heir to this planet, as a, a, a person who was put here to be in charge. So they tap into your power that you've never tapped into. Most of you have never tapped into your spiritual power. Most of you, you have never laid hands on the sick and they recovered. Most of you have never uh, parted a storm. Most of you have never used your psychic abilities for anything. You've never used the natural power and authority that God gave us because we live here. And what happens is that this is what some people believe, some theologians believe, these demons don't even have any power except to trick you, to trick you into getting you to agree with them and then they use your power, your untapped power. You know, they say we only use 2% of our brains, right? 90% of our brain, they don't know what it does. They don't understand what it does. Doctors, science, they don't know what your brain does. 98% of it, they don't know what it does. Or maybe it's 90%, I don't know. It's ridiculous. The vast majority of your brain is somehow dormant. Well, that's in where your natural power lies. And so, I've had people come on here that are Satanists. I'll come on the channel in the, in the comment section. Send me emails, things like that. Those, these kind of Satanists don't believe in a deity. They only believe in natural power. This is what I'm talking about, the natural power that we have. That 98% of our brain, that, or 90% of our brain that we don't use, that's there, we don't understand what the devil does, <laughs> right? And so these, a lot of these people, the Satanists, who don't really believe in a devil, they don't believe in demons, right? They believe in a natural power. A lot of witches, uh, certain types of witches, and certain types of earth magic practitioners believe in this earth energy that we have access to right now I believe the ultimate power 
and ultimately the only guarantee of life after death is to uh, is to align yourself with Jesus Christ in doing so you realign yourself with the Creator who made this planet who gave us this authority to begin with the uh, the source of the earth energy, the source of the supernatural power, the creator who put the 90% of your brain that we don't understand in there, right? That by aligning with God through Jesus Christ, that we can not only unlock that earth power, that spirit power that God gave us through the use of our telepathy, our psychic abilities, our prophetic abilities, um, the powers that Jesus operated in, right that you see him operating in but with Jesus he aligned him being aligned with God could also command angels so when you add to the fact that we each one of us as human beings have a right to this earth energy this supernatural power this psychic ability that somehow we've been lost has been lost or uh, we've forgotten how to use or has been taken away for whatever reason a block has been put up there's a lot of theories on how that happened but as a Christian, we have the ability to command angels. Angels are uh, in, not in charge of us, but are, have, uh, they take charge over us. What I'm trying to say is we are in their care. That's what that word means. It's kind of confusing, charge. What that means is like um, a child is protected by his mother, right? So we are protected by angels when we align ourselves with Christ. They are there working on our behalf 24-7. We have the natural earth energy that Satanists and other witches tap into to do all kinds of things. We have that. It's being now uh, empowered by and in, in working in concert with and magnified by the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit now, which I believe is just the Spirit of Christ in the earth. So I'm kind of, I don't, I don't really believe in a, there's a, a trinity as much as I believe in a duality that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are essentially the same thing um, so that's in another video the trinity according to sage you can look that up but we have this, this full balance of power as Christians and this is why we can overcome the enemy this is why the witches and, uh, and you know dark black magic practitioners people who worship demons, conjure demons, align themselves with demons they will never have the power that a Christian has well our army outnumbers their army two to one that's in the Bible that there's only uh, only one third of the angels left God's service in favor uh, of being in rebellion and uh, against God. And so we have them vastly outnumbered when it comes to angelic power. We have a natural right to the authority of the earth, uh, uh, whereas people who give their allegiance to demons have a delegated authority. They're delegating their authority basically to demons. They're giving their authority up to demons, right? Where our authority is uh, is natural because we are born here and we are aligned with God and He is the creator of the whole system. So that gives us an edge. The net result is the dark side will never win. The light will always overcome the darkness. It is the way it is the reality of this uh, system that we find ourselves in. And the only way we lose is if you cross over to the dark side. The only way we even come close to losing this fight is when people align themselves with the dark side. So what's it pay to work for the devil? <laughs> how, does, how, how do people cross over to the dark side and why? Most people who cross over to the dark side do this because they have been victimized by some demonically inspired or possessed human. People cross over to the dark side out of trauma. One thing I do like about the Star Wars trilogy is it is a great study of the uh, battle between good and evil. And it does show the pathway where otherwise good people will cross over to the dark side. Uh, Anakin in the Star Wars movies would grow up to become Darth Vader and it was the tragedy of his family being killed 
It was the tragedy of his uh, tumultuous childhood of poverty that caused him to become bitter inside and caused him to embrace the temptation of the dark side. When we hear, hear the word temptation, being tempted by evil, a lot of people think of it like, oh, I was tempted to eat that piece of cake, but I, I held my ground and I overcame that temptation. Or I was tempted to sleep with that woman when my wife was out of town, but I didn't do that. Or I was tempted by this or tempted by that. That's not really the meaning of the word temptation. The meaning of the word temptation is much bigger than that. And it's perfectly... Um, described in the uh, in the temptation of Jesus when he was up on the mountain when the when when Satan a, a principal demon if not the principal demon demon comes to Jesus and carries him away to the top of the world so that he can see all of the kingdoms of the world I makes me think of space like he takes him into space right and he shows him everything the world has to offer. Maybe this was through visions and they never left the ground. Maybe they were teletransported. I don't know when, when you're dealing with individuals and entities who know how to manipulate earth power and they have their own supernatural power, what they're capable, what, what this encounter was really like. So, but nonetheless, Jesus was offered the keys to pleasure, the keys to wealth, the keys to power in this earth from the devil who could give him all of those things. Now that's temptation. The temptation of Christ is not a temptation to sin. The temptation of Christ is the temptation to switch sides, to join in allegiance with the dark side, to join in an open rebellion and warfare against Jesus, in ex I mean against God rather, in this case. Uh, with, nowadays it would be against Jesus as well. But to act in this rebellious way, the temptation of Christ is a perfect example of what real temptation is where the devil offers you something crazy good beyond your wildest imagination to join him. But what does the devil really pay? The Bible says, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? And when you side with the devil, you hear, it's like the old saying, making a deal with the devil. Excuse me, I got some allergies going here. Um, everybody's seen my Crossroads video. Everybody's seen how uh, I was offered fame, fortune, every depravity, every luxury. And all I had to do was say no to God. All I had to do was align with the dark side. All I had to do was say yes to the devil. But then what? As a musician, so many of my most talented friends, the people that are my equals or greater than I in the business, many of them took the deal. Many of them said yes, where I said not just no, but hell no, get out of my bar, you stinking devil. They went, hmm, tell me more. Tell me more. What kind of cars? What kind of, what kind of women? What kind of, uh, of feign and debauchery? Which, what exactly are you offering me? How much money? Where I just went, ah, oh, no, there's not enough money in the world. There's nothing in this world that would separate me from God, and I refuse to go there. And uh, you know what? You're my enemy. I'll do this without you or in spite of you. And um, that led to the rest of my life. But this temptation to cross over to the dark side, Jim Brewer, I, I hope you guys are checking out some of his comedy. As long as you don't have too thin of a, of a, a Christian skin and you can appreciate the the humanity of his of his comedy especially if you like if you're an old school rocker you know he's just kind of you know he's my vintage but Jim Brewer talks about a time early in his career where his marriage was on the rocks and him being kind of a closet believer not not a full like Christian person but just like he believes in God he, he does the right thing he tries to pe treat people good you know he he kind of grew up in church you know he took he he him, him and God have an understanding, right? There's a lot of us like that. Me and God got an understanding. We, we always have. And so Jim Brewer talks about a time in his life when his marriage was on the rocks and he starts praying to God. He's in his car. He's like, God, you got to do something. You got to, because I'm telling you what, if you don't do something, I mean, if you don't help me, if you don't come through for me on this, God, and he, he 
he's talking to God in so many ways. I've spoken to God this way. I've spoken to God like this a lot. This is kind of how me and God talk. And I have threatened this exact threat somewhat recently. Because <laughs> sometimes... Uh, when you're going through trials and you're just looking for God to bail you out, you just you just come to him like an angry child. But <laughs> Jim Brewer comes at God and he says, hey, if you don't fix this, if you don't fix this thing between me and my wife, if some miracle don't come in here, man, I'm, I'm going to cross over to the dark side. And let me tell you, God, if I crossed over to the dark side, I'd crush it. Like, I'm going to get me some leather pants. I'm going to be a rock star. I'm going to be like, bleh. <laughs> 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 So that's what temptation is. And, and to end that story, apparently, uh, he didn't cross over to the dark side and there was a miracle in their life and his wife found Jesus within three days and it changed their life. They're still married. They're, they're madly in love and it's been going on from the beginning. They're soulmates. So, um, yeah, God is a, a God of miracles. It pays to be on God's team. But what does the devil pay? Well, we know what the devil offers you. He offers you everything. You know, he, uh, he offers you everything, but then there's always the fine print. Um, I heard someone recently, I can't even tell you who it was, it was just a guy kind of uh, pontificating on the internet, on YouTube. And he said, you know, I was thinking about that Charlie Daniels song, you know, The Devil Went Down to Georgia. And uh, I was just kind of thinking about after that, and the devil goes back and he's talking to his buddies at the at the devil watering hole down here at the at the you know wherever the devils go to drink and, and unwind, and uh, he tells the story to one of his devil buddies, and this other devil goes, wait a minute, he won, and the devil's like, oh yeah, boy, that jo boy Johnny can play the fiddle. There's just no denying it, and he said, well, who judged the contest? And the devil said, well, I did. And the other demon goes, how'd you lose again? <laughs> You think if you try to make a deal with the devil that he's actually going to give you that fiddle of gold? He's judging the contest. That's the moral of that story. The devil is the judge of the contest and Johnny never wins. Johnny's promised the fiddle of gold. I'll get around to giving you the fiddle of gold. Oh, hey, how about the fiddle of gold tomorrow? Here's a, here's a fiddle of lead and, and, and silver. We'll get that gold one to you later on. Here's the silver-plated one. It's just as pretty. Uh, this is how the devil works. The devil doesn't respect his, the deals that they make. When you make a deal with the devil, <laughs> the joke's on you because the devil's a liar and he don't keep his word. The devil's a liar and he don't follow through. Don't believe me? You ever heard of a thing called the 27 Club? The 27 Club is a list of very famous, iconic rock stars middle-of-the-road, well-known musician, artists, recording artists, and a lot of people you never really heard of. They all got one thing in common. They all died at the age of 27. The rumor has it that these people made a deal with the devil, just like the deal that uh, Robert Johnson was supposed to have made at the Crossroads. They made a movie called Crossroads, Crossroads with Ralph Macchio, that probably has one of the best heavy metal guitar solos in, uh, in, in the history of guitar playing by Mr. Steve Vai. Um, he was the uh, devil's musician in that. And he played both parts. So Machio's not really playing the guitar. That's Steve Vai playing against himself, just so you know. But the crossroads, Robert Johnson said to have sold his soul to the devil. It's the Faustian deal. Uh, the first recorded story of this was a man named Faust who traded money for his soul. In this case, Robert Johnson uh, gave his soul up for the ability to play the guitar. And one of the crazy things about Robert Johnson is that most people, most guitar players, most historians of rock and roll say that all of his, uh, all of his um, chops are the foundational root. The things that he played on the guitar, as rudimentary as they sound to us now, gave birth to everything that we call rock and roll. Don't don't don't. I'm sorry. It's still rock. It's only rock and roll, and I like it. <laughs> Most of it. <laughs> Some of it. Some of it. I try. Hey, I. It's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> but uh, I do sing probably more country than I do rock at karaoke. 
but I still, uh, anyway, how to get off on rock and roll. Well, because we're talking about selling your soul to the devil, we're talking about the 27 Club. So these people who took the deal that was offered to me, they took the deal that was offered to Jesus, and they got to live about, some of them, eh, five, six, maybe seven years. They have a grand career. They make a real impact. They make a big flash on the scene, and then they're gone. Always in some weird, mysterious way. Drug addiction, I mean, uh, drug overdoses, heart attacks. Mama Cass from, uh, I think it's, uh, she's from Peter, Paul, and Mary, I think. Or, I don't know, there's another one. One of those old hippie bands. Anyway, Mama Cass, big heavy set lady. Mamas and Papas, that's what she was in. Um, she, uh, she choked on a chicken bone, I think. Like, she just died of choking on her own vomit. Maybe it's drug-related. Drug a lot of this stuff is always swept under the rug. You know, John Belushi, um, uh, Chris Farley. I don't know if those guys were 27. Some, some, something tells me they were both in that club. Um, but Jimi Hendrix was 27. Uh, Janis Joplin, 27. Uh, the lead singer for The Doors. Um, I always forget his name. The Lizard King. Jim Morrison. Uh, 27. So this is what it's like when you make a deal with the devil. The devil will trick you. You will be required to do everything he told you to do. Everything he wants you to do. But the stuff he promises you, he never follows through with. And if he does, it's just enough to tease you. It's just enough for you to get used to it. And then it's over. And even those people who lived... Uh, a full life who sold their soul to the devil. Like, uh, uh, what's his name? Oh, I should have wrote some of this stuff down. I'm, I went down a road I wasn't planning to go down. I didn't intend to talk about this, but, you know, taking me where the spirit leads. Um, but it's, uh, how do you feel? I can never remember his name. How does it feel to be on your own like a rolling stone? Dylan, right? Um, Bob Dylan. He had a really long career. He's, I don't know if he's still alive. He, he may be. But he was very, a very old man. And this wasn't that long ago. And he was being interviewed and they said, why are you still out uh, knocking out 200 shows a year? Why do you have this crazy touring schedule? Why are you still working after all these years? And he told him straight up, he goes, hey, I got to hold my end up at the bargain. My end of the bargain up. And he goes, the guy interviewing him says, into what bargain? Who'd you make a bargain with? He goes, you know, you know, him, you know. <laughs> all right? So he said, well, what did you bargain? He said, well, I'd get to be a star and I'd get all this stuff. And, you know, I just have to keep, I just have to keep producing. I can't ever stop. I can't stop. So you don't even get a vacation. If he doesn't kill you early, he puts you on a treadmill like an animal uh, at, a, at a mill grinding out wheat on this circular path just going just like an animal of burden you know like a human machine chunking it out day in day out when you're old and you're tired and you want to quit guess what you can't if you want to stay alive you got to keep working for the devil the devil is not a good boss the devil's pay stinks you may get a big chunk up front but he's going to get it on the back end how many rich and famous stars that sold their soul to the devil ended up living in a cardboard box, couch surfing, living in their car, strung out on drugs after being one of the most famous people in the world. This is a repeating story that you cannot deny. It is out there to the point it's stereotypical. This is how the devil treats his children. How does God treat his children? He blesses us with long lives. If we walk in his paths of righteousness, if we hear his voice and if his sheep know his voice and we follow his lead, when we find the tongue of the river, when we find God's will and purpose for our life, when we are walking out, then God is at work in all things to benefit those that, are, that love God and are called according to his purpose. That God is at work in all things and even things that might on its surface look like a tragedy turn out to benefit you in the end because God is at work in all things. What, are the, what is the pay of being a Christian? Peace. 
joy, happiness, love, compassion, empathy. And does he take care of my physical needs? Yes, he does. Thank you for helping me and thank you for listening to God because God's blessing you and you're blessing me and that's how that all works. See, in the kingdom of God, we take care of each other. In the kingdom of God, uh, we're one family. We didn't just gain the blessings of God when we sided with him and said no to the dark side. We gained each other. People that cross over to the dark side and, and do the really darkest things like black magic, sex magic, not just earth magic, but demonic magic, Solomonic demonic magic. These people that get involved in this, they're never healthy. They're never happy. They're never well. They never get what they want. They're always in a conflict. They put spells on other people and other people put spells on them. They go to put spells on people like me under God's protection and God turns that around on them and their spell is dumped back on them and they are become the victim of their own meanness. They become a victim of their own plot. The Bible tells us they become entangled in the traps they set for others. The Bible tells us that people like that run and flee when nobody chases them. They don't have peace. They're paranoid. They're scared to death. They're looking over their shoulder all the time. They're just waiting for karma to catch up with them. They're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. There's somebody out there listening. And the devil's been calling to you. He's been telling you the lie of the genie. Oh, here's, you release me into your life and here are three wishes. But we know how that works out. In all those genie movies, them genies are liars. They trick you. It's all about trying to trick the genie, but you can't. He's too sneaky. Somebody out there's been talking to a genie. Somebody out there's been listening to demons. Somebody that under the sound of my voice right now has that choice looming on them. Do you get through whatever pain you're doing now, you're enduring now and decide to follow God and the light or do you take the devil's deal? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you something this gray hair here uh, gives me the right to say. I know the devil's a liar and he won't keep his word. And the minute you sign with him, you're food. The minute you sign with the devil, you're toast. The minute you sign with the devil, he takes everything you've got and leaves you with nothing. He'll attack your health. He'll attack your finances. He'll attack your relationships. He'll attack your peace of mind, your mental stability. The devil's like a roaring lion, roaming to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Do not believe this lion devil that led us all astray at the Garden of Eden, that serpent, that smooth-talking demon who seduced Eve and brought us all down and separated us from our true destiny that Christ had to come and realign us to give us our power and authority. Now walk in that power and authority. We are all like Eve at that moment in the Garden of Eden right now. Every day you get up, it's a choice to follow God. Every day you get up, it's a choice to say no to the devil. Every day is a new day and every day is a new commitment. And if you live like that, if you recommit your life to Jesus every day, the devil can't touch you. Sickness has no power over you. You will have peace of mind, a sound mind, health, good sleep, good digestion. Blessings will follow you. You will be paid for your labor. My boss, my master, is the fairest of all. He's the most ethical of all. I can trust that he's going to come through for me on payday every single day, every single time. He has got my back to the point where he is already preparing to help me through uh, challenges that I don't even know exist yet. He's already got a plan to take me right around it, right through it, right over it. Because he's at work in all things to the benefit of those of us who love God and are called according to his purpose. If you're struggling today, 
I want you to know all you have to do is reach out and grab his hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The devil's a liar and his side don't pay. They don't pay nothing but heartache and turmoil and pain. We in the kingdom, we take care of each other. I want to thank all of you for taking care of me. I want to encourage you to continue taking care of me as I feed the sheep on behalf of Jesus. I'm here bringing you the, the food, the food of the kingdom. So if you're benefiting from this, if you're being fed, support this channel. Make it so that I can continue to focus on these messages. I can continue to deliver these sermons that I know is changing lives. There are about 500 of you out there that watch every single time I put one of these up. Four to five hundred. And I'm getting emails on a daily basis telling me how we're changing lives. How this message is giving people the power to overcome the devil. Giving them the power to walk in God's blessings and in His power. So if you're one of those people that has benefited from this, please help me so I can continue to bring you this message and continue to do this work. There's a PayPal link in the description. Click there to pay me that way. If you want to if you want to contribute via Patreon, there's a, a link somewhere up here by my picture, I think, where there's a Patreon link. It's kind of a small one. Um, I need to start adding that in. Maybe I'll try to add that Patreon link in. Um, but in the comment section, you can get to my PayPal. You can find my post office box if you want to do it old school. Uh, thanks to a guy named Craig who sends me really cool stuff. I don't know why God put it on his heart, but it makes me feel less alone. And it makes up for all those... Uh, all those Christmases that I suffered through as a kid where we were doing God's work and we did not ha have time nor could we afford Christmas presents. And uh, we couldn't afford birthday presents. And so we just let Christmas and birthdays pass, for the most part, unnoticed. Um, so thanks, Craig. You know, he, he just gave me an ax. It doesn't seem like much, but it's a fine ax. I really like it. So, uh, and I got a lot of people that, that bless me. Tom, you're such a huge blessing to me, you and your family. Um, yeah, what a great supporter. Uh, Devin, I mean, and, and the list goes on. Ryan, I mean, it just goes on and on. If I didn't call you out, please don't take it personally. There's enough uh, small do donors that I can't keep up with all of them. And all of it adds up to me getting just enough to keep this going. I'm getting just enough every week, so continue to support me. If you, uh, if God's calling you to step in and make a, a donation, please do. That helps bridge the gap when other people uh, run across hard times and can't give like they were before. That kind of all happens. But it's working. It's working. We're working it. I'm going to leave you with this powerful blessing and this prayer for you. May God surround you in his ring of fire and hedge of thorns of protection. May his mighty angels be dispatched to you in sufficient rank, authority, and number to drive the enemy from your midst. And may then he surround you in his peace, the peace that is beyond all understanding, the peace of Jesus Christ himself, the Holy Spirit. May it envelop you and comfort you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time on The Sheep Pen.